This is Mac OS Ken. A look at Apple's June quarter earnings. It is Friday, the 29th of July, 2022. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Collide. Endpoint security powered by people. Learn more and try it for free at K-O-L-I-D-E collide.com slash macOSCAN. This show is also sponsored by Upstart, fair and fast personal loans. They can be hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel when you have high interest debt, and sometimes it can be harder to seek help. That's where Upstart comes in. Upstart-powered personal loans can help you pay down high-interest debt all online with simple and easy-to-understand payment terms. Upstart knows you're more than just your credit score, so they check that, but they consider additional factors as well, like your income, employment, and other information provided in your loan application to find you a smarter rate for your loan. You can check your rate in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000 without impacting your credit score, and you can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Don't wait and check your rate today at upstart.com slash macOSCan. U-P-S-T-A-R-T, that's upstart dot com slash mac os can to check your rate today don't forget to use my url to let them know i sent you loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application go to upstart dot com slash mac os can If you were hoping to land on some sort of economic certainty after Apple's June quarter earnings call, you have come to the wrong timeline. Apple's press release on the numbers says the company posted a June quarter revenue record of $83 billion. The pro is followed by Apple 3.0. We're looking for revenue to grow 3% year over year. Instead, they got 2%. Those same pros were only looking for earnings per share of $1.14 billion. What they got instead was a buck twenty. Again, this is a small number of a few analysts, a more narrow gauge than analysts surveyed by Fact Sheet. A piece from the Wall Street Journal says they undershot as well, having predicted earnings per share of a buck sixteen. With a lot going against the company, including supply constraints, foreign exchange headwinds, and bugging out of Russia. Apple made the historic quarter thanks to records in the Americas, Europe, and in the rest of Asia-Pacific region, as well as records in emerging markets, with strong double-digit growth in Brazil, Indonesia, and Vietnam, and a near doubling of revenue in India. In fact, revenue was so good, Apple was able to come in under the $4 billion to $8 billion revenue headwind, about which the company warned on the March quarter earnings call. Now, there was not a lot of rhetorical preamble this time. While Apple CEO Tim Cook did acknowledge hashtag these times in which we live, that was pretty much just a springboard into Apple product and performance. COVID-19, people in Ukraine living through the Russian onslaught, crazy days economically. It is all the more reason why we are working hard to help our customers navigate the world as it is, while empowering them to create the world as it can be, said Apple CEO. And with that, he headed into product. It was a record quarter for iPhone, according to CEO Cook, both in terms of revenue and switchers. The Apple 3.0 pros had expected iPhone revenue of $37.7 billion, a drop of nearly 5%. Instead, iPhone delivered revenue of $40.7 billion, an increase of 3%, according to Apple CFO Luca Maestri. As CEO Cook said about the company as a whole, CFO Maestri said iPhone set records in both developed and emerging markets, and customer satisfaction is almost off the chart, pegged in the U.S. at 98%, 
according to the latest numbers from 451 Research. Turning to the Mac, Apple CEO waxed rhapsodic about the MacBook Air and 13-inch MacBook Pro, now powered by Apple's M2. The Apple 3.0 Pro said expected Mac revenue of $8.5 billion. That meant a big miss on somebody's part. Mac revenue came in at $7.4 billion, a drop of 11%. CEO Cook pointed out that Mac remains supply constrained, though he said the company is encouraged by consumer demand. While sales seem to have been down, CFO Maestri said Apple's investments in Mac have helped drive significant growth in the installed base, and it just keeps being the way. Nearly half the people purchasing a Mac last quarter were new to the product, according to Maestri. Still seeing supply constraints as well was iPad. Or were iPads. The Apple 3.0 Pros had expected iPad revenue of $7 billion, roughly. iPad beat that, delivering revenue of about $7.2 billion. Still, revenue for the category was down 2% versus the same quarter a year ago due to a supply constraint for an exchange headwind combo. As with Mac and iPhone, CFO Maestri said the iPad-installed base reached a new all-time high last quarter, and, as with the Mac, half the people buying iPad last quarter were new to Apple's tablet. On the Watch Watch, the sweet silicon center of Apple's wearables, home, and accessories, or WHA category, CEO Cook did not do numbers, unless you count the number nine, Number nine. Number nine. That's the number nine in watchOS 9. He talked about the existing health aspects and the health improvements on the way, leaving CFO Maestri to address the 8% decline in WHA revenue. The Apple 3.0 Pros had expected that to come in at $8.6 billion. The category delivered about $8.1 billion. As with the rest of the business, there were several factors stacked against the category, including foreign exchange headwinds, uneven product launch timing this year versus last year, some supply constraint, and the overall macroeconomic woozy. Put on a happy face, though. The CFO says the installed base of devices in the category hit a new all-time record, and where Apple Watch is concerned, over two-thirds of the people buying one last quarter were new to that product. Setting our sights on services, CEO Cook was back to talking numbers because revenue for the June quarter hit $19.6 billion, up 12% versus the same quarter a year earlier. That would still be a bit of a miss from the Apple 3.0 pros. They'd been looking for revenue of $19.75 billion, Still set a June quarter record, though, on the back of Apple TV+, Plus, Fitness+, Plus, Apple Arcade, Apple Music, and on and on and on. Once again, CFO Maestri said revenue for the category set records in both developed and emerging markets and set all-time records in many countries around the world, including the U.S., Mexico, Brazil, Korea, and India. All of that despite the foreign exchange headwinds, stopping sales in Russia, and macroeconomic uncertainty. Apple CFO listed a few reasons for the rise, including continued growth for the installed base and increased customer engagement with Apple services. According to Mr. Maestri, transacting accounts, paid accounts, and accounts with paid subscriptions all grew double digits year over year, and paid subscriptions showed very strong growth. Apple now has more than 860 million paid subscriptions across the services on its platform, which is up more than 160 million during the last 12 months alone. Though not a product category, Apple CFO did address the enterprise using B of A and Y Pro as examples. Maestri said that customers in the enterprise market are investing in Apple products as a way to attract and keep talent. Surprising no one, the company did not 
offer financial guidance for the current quarter, but they did do that directional insight thing. The way Apple sees it, year-over-year -year revenue growth will accelerate during the September quarter compared to the June quarter despite significant foreign exchange headwinds. Services revenue will grow, but that growth will slow compared to the June quarter due to FX headwinds and the whole macro thing. Stuff looks better on the product side, though. Or easier to make and get, anyway. Apple expects supply constraints to be lower than it experienced in the June quarter, according to the CFO. Oh, and they're returning money to shareholders. Going next with a cash dividend of $0.23 cents per share of the company's common stock. That'll be paid out on the 11th of August to shareholders of record, as of the close of business, on the 8th of August. With that, the call was thrown open to questions. We'll hit some of those in a moment, but first a word from Collide. Endpoint security powered by people. Do you get how excited I am about what Collide does? One time I got in my car to go someplace. Same restaurant I'd gone to for three weeks in a row on the same night of the week. I didn't tell my iPhone where I wanted to go, but it told me how long it would take to get there because it knew what was going on. I was kind of blown away, and that is how excited I get about Collide. You say security updates and people glaze over. I know. I'm people. You say Collide's going to be smart enough to know what security steps I need to take, that it'll message me to let me know in Slack, and it'll explain why I'm doing what I'm doing? Well, I'm nerd enough to think that that's awesome. You can have that for your workforce, whether they're rocking Linux, Mac, or Windows devices, supplied by you or brought by them. Making security fixes friendly, making workers part of your security solution, that's Collide. And to me, that's exciting. Find out more and activate Collide's 14-day free trial. Visit collide.com slash macOSken to sign up today. That's K-O-L-I-D-E collide.com slash macOSken. Enter your email when prompted to receive your free Collide gift bundle after trial activation at k-o-l-i-d-e collide.com slash macOSken. If Apple's earnings call had been a video call, feels like there might have been a lot of shrugging and lifting of hands. You know, like when you don't no, for sure. I don't mean that in a bad way, nor a disrespectful way. It's just a feeling. Evercore analyst Amit Daryanani started off the cues. There's macroeconomic concern out there. There's concern around the consumer. Is that hitting Apple? Stressing that he is not an economist, CEO Cook said, they think they saw macro headwinds. I mean, they did. Foreign exchange headwinds being an easy one to spot. When you look at product categories, though, there was no obvious impact on iPhone, foreign exchange not included. When you look at the Mac and iPad, it gets more difficult to tell. Supply was so constrained, it was really hard to test demand. Wearables, home, and accessories did show impact. You could attribute to macro eco woozy. And yeah, okay, search ads in the App Store were affected by macroeconomic concerns as well. That said, Cook said overall, Apple was very happy with June quarter results, especially hashtag in this economy and considering hashtag these times in which we live. Piper Sandler analyst Harsh Kumar had a couple of interesting questions. First, the way Apple keeps adding new services, how are analysts supposed to model the future of Apple services? Well, first of all, we're going for the current quarter, not all quarters to come, indicated Maestri. 
That said, there are lots of moving parts to the services story, two of the biggest being the installed base, the growing engine of the services thing, and customer engagement. Of course, near term, there are pockets of concern, such as the macro eco and tough compares thanks to past us staying inside to avoid the COVID. But you know, look at the whole story and Apple feels good. Question two was an old question with a twist. Given economic uncertainty, valuations for a lot of companies have gone down. Does that put Apple in a buying mood? CEO Cook said what he usually says, that Apple is always looking. So far, they have focused on smaller acquisitions for talent and intellectual property, but, you know, they find the right thing, they'll buy it. Taking his first turn on an Apple call was Morgan Stanley analyst Eric Woodring. There's usually a three-year cadence to iPhone upgrades, according to Woodring, and we're two years into iPhone 5G. Does that put pressure on next year? Cook's answer was pretty wide-ranging. First, June quarter record for iPhone revenue and switchers, so, you know, go team. He then called back to the growth for iPhone seen in Indonesia, Vietnam, and India. According to Mr. Cook, iPhone tends to be the engine for those markets, particularly at the beginning of creating the market there for Apple products. So, like, some kind of a halo effect or something. Also, while some areas are chock full of 5G, globally, 5G penetration is pretty low. So, room to run. Woodring also had a question about services growth in the current quarter. Will the category maintain double-digit growth? Without saying no, CFO Mastery said, not yes. Growth for services last quarter was 12%. Apple's going to see a 6% impact from foreign exchange year over year. Then there's the whole Russia thing, so he didn't say no, but not yes. Baird research analyst Richard Kramer wondered about affordability of product, especially with the wacky macro. CFO Maestri said affordability is an important topic for Apple, one that they are addressing with initiatives like installment plans and trade-in programs. Now, one question that prompted a bit of discussion on Twitter came from J.P. Morgan analyst Samik Chatterjee. With all the macroeconomic uncertainty and concern around the consumer, is Apple tightening any belts or battening down any hatches? Mr. Cook's response... We believe in investing through the downturn, and so we'll continue to hire people and invest in areas, but we are being more deliberate in doing so in recognition of the realities of the environment. The discussion that prompted, by the way, what did that mean exactly? After two and a half years on planet COVID, Citigroup analyst gentleman Jim Suva wondered whether Apple had picked up on changes in iPhone replacement cycles. CEO Cook said that that was hard to measure with exact precision. Really, though, what Apple wants to do is make a product everybody loves and wants to trade up to. He says what Apple is focused on is innovating like crazy and giving somebody something that they really want to see themselves using. Now, this was not the last question, but it's where we're going to end up. Cleveland research analyst Ben Bolin tried to get Apple CEO to talk about what Apple has learned around augmented reality and virtual reality. Cook bragged on the 14,000-plus AR kit apps in the App Store. Those are augmented reality for iPhone and iPad. And of course, we are in the business of innovation, so we're always exploring new and emerging technologies, said Cook. And just like Forrest Gump... That is all he had to say about that. Of course, that wasn't all that was said. If you just can't get, just can't get, just can't get enough, the call is up to replay on Apple's investor site and will be for the next couple of weeks. It is now available as a podcast and will be for the next couple of weeks. And a big socially distanced kiss on the mouth to the Motley Fool for their transcript of Thursday's call... Reading is fundamental. 
and the fool is cool, leaving you to that. Today is likely to be filled with notes from Apple analysts covering the call. What say we meet here Monday and talk about those? Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Upstart. Fair and fast personal loans. Learn more and check your rate at upstart.com slash macOSCan. This show is also sponsored by Collide, endpoint security powered by people. Learn more and try it for free at K-O-L-I-D-E, collide.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handle by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.